hello welcome back we will continue our um, guide how to paint this door uh, we have prepared our drawing and we will now discuss all the aspects and our workflow and to like you know, to finish this um, art piece first of all I'll go quickly through the all materials and um, tools that I have prepared for this uh, job. First, our drawing made on the watercolor paper, securely attached with the masking tape to something uh, that is waterproof. I'm using glass. Uh, then. I have printed my source a set of brushes I will be using these four brushes uh, this one the big one is just for one purpose to apply some water at the initial stage I will be using this once that's it and all my painting will be done with these three brushes these two are soft and uh, they are synthetic imitation of this one is sable oh sorry um, squirrel and that is imitation of sable uh, and this brush this is, this thing is my favorite it's number eight called Camron uh, Pro and the brush is also synthetic and it's quite stiff not so soft and it's really really useful for many applications well I will demonstrate what exactly it's for that's all we don't need much then our paints um, we will discuss that later uh, some piece of scrap paper I will be making some swatches trying paint before I use it on the my uh, final bit uh, for this particular job I picked I found this wee palette somewhere <laughs> I had previously it's brand new so what I'm gonna be using this for I will squeeze in some of these um, cells paint that I will pick specifically for this watercolor piece so it will be just a few of them but I think it will serve the purpose it will be quite informative and not confusing because we will be using here only specific colors not many well that's the thing of course uh, some water and now we will talk about choice of paints now I will take this in the front of me and I'll explain my you know my thoughts about this what I'm thinking because uh, when I'm planning uh, my work I always thoroughly study the source whatever it is either as a reference picture or something like life object I have to decide on many many like you know things before I start uh, first of all I have to uh, look at the general appearance and see what is the key uh, tonality in here is it like either warm key or colder uh, this is kind of why I like this specific thing because this is the contrasty one and the contrast created not just the between the balance of dark areas and light areas but also between some golden warm colors like here there in in this exposed stonework uh, and it comes in the contrast with the cold uh, violet blue grayish colors very nice so that's the first one thing we need to think about the uh, overall temperature of the uh, of the picture then I see uh, the texture 
texture is very rich and it includes many many layers of aged material and uh, different you know items so it i believe that will be that will involve a lot of uh, glazing load of layering also check then i need to go through the colors and decide what what paints i will be using for this at the end of the day and first it just like, jumps at me like this bit here so that blue color is the closest to it is cerulean blue so that uh, i i'm using uh, paints uh, by uh, Japanese company Holbein strictly I don't have anything else using it for ages love it artist quality professional paint I buy them in the huge tubes like this that gives me some flexibility so I can use it in the palettes or perhaps sometimes I can use empty pans squeeze it there put it in the box whatever very handy so, it's just a thing to, to, to understand. Cerulean blue. For this blue, for that blue, maybe, well, nothing else. So, that goes in my palette first. Say, uh, I'll squeeze it here. On the cold side. Oh. Get rid of these little things. Cerulean blue, done then we also need another type of blue uh, for the uh, this path maybe i will be using somewhere else and that is very important because this thing will be used a lot here phthalo blue a red shade okay so i will squeeze it in here so just working on the colder colors and i'd like to have also permanent violet in my palette because i see some distinctive violet uh, notes in here a little bit there so and the, i can see it in the gray patches we will be using that so violet goes here then that part of the door is just clearly to me looks like indigo so i will use indigo as well perhaps it's too much even but that's a good thing indigo then now very important question what we're gonna do with the all brown stuff you see the thing is i don't use and i strictly don't recommend to use any separate brown colors like siennas umbras no 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 no. they never in my palette it it might sound surprising how it works how we get all these brown shades it's very simple we will mix them and we will mix them out of this magic combination between phthalo blue and orange. I use a specific brilliant orange. It's um, also by Halbane, but it's tested many, many times. Uh, for this purpose, you can use, uh, uh, if you can't find this, uh, cadmium orange, but it has to be cadmium orange, not cadmium orange tint or cadmium orange uh, hue it has to be single pigmented cadmium orange i think it's uh, the name for it is po20 i think so that goes in here and i will make a couple of this i will show you in a moment why now just quickly little demonstration how it works like that and i will take a wee drop of blue and bring it over here this is phthalo blue red shade i wash my brush 
thoroughly. Wipe it with kitchen towel I also used to have here near me. And I'll start to mix in some orange. And as you can see, immediately we have received nice grayish brownish mix. If I increase amount of orange in this mix, I will get all varieties of brown colors, you see. The problem, the only problem is with this, is the proper ingredients. If you have, if you will use not proper orange, a mixture between red and yellow, it will not work. Because yellow paint, in when it mixed with the blue, it will immediately give you green shade. We don't need that. But when you use cadmium orange and proper blue, you can get everything from black to golden orange. All arrays of colors. And these colors perfectly fit these exposed uh, stonework patches there. So I'm sorted. I don't need these extra tubes of brown colors. I never buy them because I can mix them myself. And this is the most used uh, combination. Uh, it's I have it all the time. So from black to golden brown, everything at your fingertips. Simple as that. So that is the thing. Also, we've got here other three colors. The thing is, uh, we can't use these paints in our picture the way they are presented in the palette. We have to do something with them. Why? You see, uh, see that, for instance, that blue. It's not pure clear blue. Something happened to it. It aged, it faded. It like in different places, like oh, in here, our blue changing and it's never constant. It, it has to be something done with the paint to bring it to that um, condition. And only way to do that is to mix our blue with um, complementary color. And for blues, complementary color is orange. Same thing that we did here. And I will show you how it might look, for instance, if we take our uh, blue, cerulean blue, just a little bit here. If we check it, it looks too wild. Just, just big of a difference here. But if I will take a little drop of orange and mix it in, that is too much even, so too much. Uh, I need more of that blue. And I'll try to test it now. As you can see, it's practically perfect match. All I did is just, I have added complementary color into my blue, which is orange. What it does, essentially, it takes away the vibrance from the original paint. And gradually, uh, the blue, if I will keep adding the orange, it will get from blue to gray. And that ingredient will kill blue in the mix completely. If you like like this, again, we, we got something gray. And as you can see, it's immediately becomes useful on this patch. We don't have to wonder what color to mix because like it's all very, very simple at the moment. Okay. So that, that is sorted. And the only thing is, just in case, if maybe somewhere, uh, if we would like to get more complex mixes, I would include my violet paint. But uh, also, when I use this violet, I will wipe this at the moment. 
for a second. When I use this violet, I, I don't want to use it pure and clean as it is here. I have to add complementary color to violet and the complementary color for violet is yellow. So this is the only reason yellow goes into my palette at the moment. Like that, I don't need much. Okay. And see what happens. Again, if I take a tiny drop of yellow and I mix it here, we also will get very nice shade of violet, which could be used in some other places here, maybe here on the door, as you can see, there is like lots of places that we can use it. Done. And the only, I would have stopped on this and generally that would work. The only thing I would like to do before I start, I would like to make some sort of underlay uh, with two colors. To me, say why I'm doing this, to me this area kind of has a glow in it and this golden yellowish color kind of shines through and this effect I would like to reproduce and apply before I start any painting first. I would like to paint in some areas golden color. For this purpose I will be using very special paint. I love it. It's called Kinacridon Gold. Okay. The only um, similar thing that I found is actually from Daniel Smith. It's called Kinacridon Sienna. Similar effect. Although it looks brown, in real life it's transparent, golden, really nice color. But I, 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 I bought it just out of curiosity. This is the only uh, non-Halbane paint I have in my palette. I used it once, never use it again. Not because I don't like it, just I don't have a use for it. I use my Kinectron Gold. I'll show you how it works. Just a tiny bit. It looks brown, but it, it isn't, trust me. Very tiny drop of Kinectron Gold. Clean water. Uh, like this. See, really nice, like a glowing color, like that. Beautiful. I want to dilute it with the water a little bit more and I want to apply it in the following areas. I'd like to have it here, very tiny transparent layer, a little bit there because it's like a kind of rusty patch in here. Uh, I'd like to put it there where my uh, stonework exposed and here. Rest of it, I will give a tiny transparent layer of cerulean blue. I'll show you how it's done. So this is two colors. I would like to give my picture uh, some sort of um, Mm. background underlaying coat out of two key uh, colors or paints. Uh, to make sure my paints are mixing softly, blending in between each other, to guarantee that I have to make the surface of my paper uh, wet. Easy, I will use that brush here, the big brush. I have clean water in the container, so always use clean water and generously applying water across the whole surface of my drawing. Nothing going to happen to a pencil. The only thing is make sure that there is no um, dry patches left. 
water applied uniform and also avoid excessive um, uh, pools of water gathering like on the surface it's supposed to that water is supposed to penetrate deep into the core of the water and that's it so I will give it a few seconds to settle that's it I'll put it aside then I will bring my palette while it's settling I will wipe here and there and I will prepare two mixes for my future work so I'll show you what I'm doing I'm bringing more water into the paint and making like a this pool of water very liquidy loads of it here I have to make sure that I can load my brush with this to achieve the following result so I'm starting with the this patch here and painting in this color like that when I'm painting I'm not doing separate strokes my brush is constantly in contact with surface here is the bluish like that it's supposed to be very very light uh, very very light so blue there as well like this really really not so like that I need more obviously for this purpose I don't need to add anything and so I, I'm using clear color so it's not that uh, critical uh, of course something here now tiny bit on the door not much stair gonna keep keeping my mix very watery like that what else just a little bit here and there and maybe and that's it now I need to blend in that golden color I was talking about and I need to make it very very thoroughly so I'd like to have a little bit there and that part of the door some of the on the stone here and a little patch in there nothing special it just creates it always will be shining through the uh, uh, overlaying coats of paint so like that okay all right now preparation is done all we need to do at this moment is uh, wait until it dries you can use a hair dryer uh, gently 
blow over until it dries before we start to paint, to continue to paint, we need to make sure our surface is completely, completely dry. So I will leave it for a few moments, then I probably will use the blow dryer to, to, to finish it off. But at this stage, uh, that part is over. So when it dries, we will get back to this and we will continue to paint and that will be absolutely different story. Now, when it's dry, this is completely dry. I can feel it. It's. Uh, I will continue my work. And at this moment, I would like to get more specific. What I mean is, if you look at the picture once again, you will notice, you will notice that picture is actually quite fragmented. We can easily separate many, many different pieces. It looks like a puzzle uh, in some way, like, like this patch, these different blocks, doors, it's all fragmented. And at this moment, I would like to create more color accent in each of those fragments. Okay, for instance, if I see this exposed uh, stonework and I will locate the lightest spot here and it's violet gray in here. So I will apply this bright, the brightest for this particular area color in that patch. If, say, in here, it's a bit more complex, I'd say we'll take a look at this fragment. We have combination of cerulean blue and this is also cerulean blue, but with the more orange added. So I will use this color to paint here. For this stone work, I will locate again the brightest a color. Obviously, it's something here in this stone, and it's mm, yellowish gray, very, very watery kind of brown. We will see how it goes. And I will paint all this here. As for the door, again, we can add a little bit more of brown paint here. I will not uh, kind of concentrate on this patch. I will do it later. So I'm more interested not in this color, like that in here and maybe this and that. So that will be my guide points for this. And similar way, I will treat each fragment and apply next more darker coat for each of those fragments. I don't want to go straight up, jump into the darkest areas and do it like in the full color. I don't want to do that. I would like to build it gradually layer by layer because all this texture created by combination of these multiple layers uh, and you will see what I mean while I'm uh, working on this. We need to achieve this effect of texture, age, the, all these imperfections, and that is done by glazing multiple times. So let's start um, with the hour work. Well, since I picked this one first, I will start with this one and I will uh, try to mix that color, the, the brightest color I can find here, which is a violet gray. Since I name it already, it's violet, I will take my violet paint. I will clean this before I do anything. Violet paint and bring a little bit of yellow complementary color into it. to 
it gradually becomes like this. I can try it. Always try. So I'm happy. And that will be my color for this. And without any hesitation, I'm just applying this color into that area. Always checking my reference. Uh, what you need to achieve here, maximum um, uniformity of the code. Not at this stage, do not get any blotchiness. So it's supposed to be really, really uniform. Uh, don't, as you can see, don't use uh, too much water. So I'm not dipping my brush constantly into the can. I'm only using the water I have here. That will give you that desirable effect. So during that process, we will be doing this many times. Now, next thing, we have two options in this workflow. We can wait until it dries naturally and say to avoid any blending on the neighboring spots, say go to some, somewhere else. And while we're working, this will dry, we can go back or we can use the blow dryer and dry this patch immediately. So I will go uh, with the first option, I will just leave it to dry naturally and say I will uh, move somewhere else. Uh, for instance, I can do something here and that color is pretty much gray and gray I will be doing out of mix between um, phthalo blue and orange. I have it pre-mixed here. See, the thing is, when you mix it this way, these colors, it creates very interesting, complex mixes. And that exactly what we need to achieve. That is too dark, but the color shade is correct. So I'll just bring more water into this. Okay. And since my this patch is quite big, I will change brush from this one to a softer, this brush here, bring more water. We need loads of it and see what I'm, I will be doing. When I'm painting, I want to make sure that I have always some amount of water gathered at the bottom of my spot. You see this? And if you doing this way, you always save and that uh, edge will never dry. I mean, it will dry eventually, but you avoid this blotchiness. So you kind of, again, don't bring any water since you mixed here. So stop, don't use any water. Use only uh, available uh, stuff that you have material on your palette. And of course, if you run out, you can mix more, but that will be the lesson. So you will learn eventually to mix uh, enough of the material so that you won't be forced to go in that mixing procedure again. That's it. I wonder if there is a similar thing somewhere else. Uh, I guess I can use a little bit here just for the like that. So very uniform, no blotchiness. Please make sure this is the way. Next, next thing. So this is what this is what I believe that is good enough. So I can go to this bit and that bit is actually quite complex because we have two different 
um, uh, mixes for cerulean blue. One is with the less orange and the more orange. I can make them separately for you to demonstrate. I will just flip that piece of paper and I will premix these two different colors. Now, one of them will be slightly degraded with a less amount of orange, very little, like this. Good. And the next will be with the more orange that looks more like gray and should be very different from this one. So you can see the difference that exactly what we need to achieve. The only thing is, before I start painting, I'd like to have nice transition between these two colors. I mean, between that blue and that thing here. And for that purpose, before I start, I need to apply some water on that particular patch. Clean water to make sure this thing is um, wet. So, when I'm doing this, I paint it with the water as if it's a paint. So, I make, have to make sure it's exactly the same way if I would have been painting with the actual paint. So, that patch needs to be covered with water in a very specific, precise way. So again, watching so that there is no excessive uh, drops of water gathered on the surface. Just let it settle for a second. Let it settle. Now when it's done, I can get back to my brush. Well, at this moment, it doesn't matter which brush. But then again, I will never go go to, to wet my brush in, in this process. I will be using only material already mixed here. So I start with this one. Apply this bed here. Then you see the presence of wet area already kind of create a barrier for the paint. It doesn't go anywhere. It's kind of a little bit too much here. You see it's it's spreading um, in a very nice manner. Tiny drop there. And I go back to this color here and we have some white spot there so we'll leave it blank location doesn't matter to be honest and Here we go. Done. So I, there is some drop of excessive water gutter here. I have to remove it. Dry brush. And I'm not wiping it. I'm just touching this with my brush. Water gets into the brush. Wash it. Wipe it dry. Then touch it again. And repeat procedure until you get rid of all excessive water along this edge. So with the tip of the brush, I just like adjust that, make it more. Okay. I didn't forget about this patch of maybe white paint or something. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna clean 
brush dried. So my brush, brush is completely dry. And I'm gonna wipe in here this bit. So I'm kind of deleting, erasing the um, top layer of the paint like this. Trust me, this will be enough. Okay, now similar way I will continue and will work with the rest of the uh, rest of my picture. Now this one. What I like about this, this kind of that bit is very very bluish and I will use different blue for that and that will be my um, Aftala blue and I will use it without any addition of uh, any extra colors. So just paint it blue. Like that. Slightly soften this transition between the colors and further using the remains of the paint that I have on the palette I finish this patch done okay I'd like to continue to work on this piece here um, in particular this rusty spot. I will use again a tiny drop of golden color. I'll try, I'll try uh, if it maybe reacts with violet in the way that I need it. It looks fine. Um, so just like that, a little bit more water. illusion of macarons and some sort of roughness here like this maybe yeah. okay now slightly gray So basically this is the um, very, um, of course time consuming slow work but uh, there is no, I think there is no other way around it and bright one here okay. and blue bit quite dark piece of blue paint in there okay now I, while I was uh, looking at the rest of the picture and uh, previously I said when I will be working in um, around this uh, stonework I I was thinking to concentrate around this color but instead of this I will choose mid-tone for this particular way the reason being I can create the mid-tone and then wipe through this for the lightest object I'll, I'll show you how it's done so i will mix um, 
Stella Blue. <clears throat> I need a loads of it. Stella Blue with orange until it gets brown. Like this. Perhaps a little more. I need to achieve this warmer golden shade. Let's see. I think looks good. And again, uh, so I just paint it in. So I'm trying to keep it as uniform as possible without any excessive blotchiness. Uh, we've got this texture here. It goes around that stone there. and continue to the top when I come in close to the cracks I would I will always leave tiny um, exposed paper like this it will help me in the future to create more realistically looking cracks so always I'm trying to think ahead okay that's the um, idea mm -hmm. this bit there so and gradually it goes down below and so I don't have enough paint premixed so I have to improvise and perhaps it will be just enough recreate trying to recreate this spot here mm -hmm. so next thing I will dry my brush and I will try to rope through this next this brown coat to expose underlying uh, brighter layer for the uh, my stone work so this is how it works so I'm just wiping off paint you're probably already guessing what's gonna happen next so in I'm trying to just replicate all the brightest bits of the stone work while it's still wet because if not to do it straight away it might be really difficult to work in the future as you can see it's already working and after that obviously we can create the darkest areas around this stones to increase effect right.
I will repeat that procedure once again. So, something like that. That is the technique. Okay, looks good. Uh, next, next, next. Um, I might work on this bit now. Light blue um, piece that goes starting from here, going around there, that and there because that will remain a rusty golden color and then this dark brown patch. For this purpose I will mix very light blue paint out of phthalo blue. Of course I will slightly to give it a touch of orange. Uh, let's see. Looks perfect. Maybe more water. And paint it in. Stomach. Immediately, I'd like to soften this edge to make sure when I paint this rusty spot, it blends blends in smoothly, but still will have some level of separation to create that patchy feeling. While it's wet. I switch to different area and we'll be working on these blocks. And as you can see, these two blocks more brownish and then it will become kind of patchy with the inclusion of blue uh, areas. And that I need to reproduce. I will use this blue with the addition of uh, orange to make it let's see oh, looks looks fine I'll keep it for a reference too intense Here we see the rounded corner with the soft transition between light and shadow. So I will wipe my brush and create this effect. Just initial. That's all. Nothing else. If going further. What I'm going to do, I just will make separate patches for exposed um, brown material and then paint 
everything around it with blue. trying to imitate this texture of the stone here. And it becomes gradually blue. Too much. More water. As you can see, projects like this require a lot of time, a lot of time. And perhaps uh, some of you that already done this picture may think, may consider to revisit it and do it again. Maybe, maybe not. variety of, of the patches of different color and shades so I'm trying to finalize the surroundings for my door um, here is the same color uh, with this slight addition of um, what is it called uh, orange this color so far so good looks fine okay and now we can finally get to work with the door I will need a bigger brush, that's for sure. And we will talk about this a little bit more uh, because in this step, we need to make sure that our color scheme and distribution of this cold and warm colors is done exactly as we want it to avoid any problems in the future. And obviously, also, I need to create this shadowy area from the beginning, because if you think, if you look at it, this is very dark spot here and in there. So that darkness of these two 
places kind of similar. Maybe it also plays along with this. Nothing else on this picture as dark as these bits. And we need to create that balance from the beginning. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing right now. Okay. I'd like to premix enough material uh, to paint the whole door and also to make sure this all um, nicely blended. I have to apply some water on the surface and I think I will do the watering first and then we'll mix the paint. So I will take this bigger brush and paint in water. It will be done just once. Unlikely we will get this technique wet on wet again, but for this initial step, just right way to do it. So it's done, it's wet and I need to premix two sets of paint. One of them is golden brown. Maybe so this would work, yeah. And indigo for the bottom, maybe with some addition. No, mm, why not? Like this, indigo and blue. Okay, let's start. I will wash the brush, get rid of the excessive water because I'm going to use this and start with the warm, dark brown color for the top of the door. I'm starting to apply this always looking at the reference picture to make sure everything is correct. So it's getting brighter towards the middle part. Is it what color is this? Uh, looks fine. And gets to bluish indigo like. sure there is no gap. Good. Now where is my uh, this brush? And now we're gonna, with the dry brush, wipe off some of the paint to expose underlaying coats along the boards.
to kind of lay down initial shape and construction of the door itself. It will be very blurry at the stage and that exactly what I what I trying to achieve. Get bright spots in exact location where they supposed to be every time I do the sweep brush takes in some amount of material from here therefore I need to wash it and wipe it kind of get rid of it to avoid bringing this material back onto our like this in some places since it wet you might need to do it a couple of times but this is the good thing already kind of schematically getting to a texture of the door everything is really really rough at the moment but but I kind of I like what what it looks like at the moment and so the last thing in this stage is color for the path walk and that is very blue I'll get that color and mix it with the tiny drop of orange now and bottom point no paint apply it without using extra ingredients uh, which normally are complementary colors that makes our paint mixes more complex more interesting and as a result looking more um, realistic and at this stage we have created undercoat for all fragments that included in our picture and for the next as the next step we're gonna work on details and build up the final appearance again piece by piece going from the top downwards but we will get back to this when everything is dry completely bone dry uh, uh, on that stage we will be working only with one brush with this one which is harder brush because this brush will not do because it's too soft I will show you the difference uh, in the next video but that part of uh, when you're choosing the materials, when you're choosing your palette, when you prepare your work and do initial coats is completed. So that is stage two. First one was sketching, done. This number two, we kind of midway before we continue. Again, as you can see, it's pretty time consuming, but that is the, um, the idea to spend more time uh, all together I think for me it will take to finish the job maybe uh, when that is done when I will, will move to the next stage it will take me about maybe two three hours to complete so as you can see uh, that job is quite 
not, not difficult, but if long enough, long enough. Uh, so this is it for the part two. I will see you again in the next uh, stage when we will be doing all details.